Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast, part of the 90 Min Football family. I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by a very, very special guest, Mrs. Arsenal herself, Nicole Holiday. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good. You know what? It's quite nice sitting and watching you do that live because, <laughs> as you know, like I listen to this quite a lot. So... It's quite fun, just sat here like, oh, I know what you're saying. <laughs> there you go, you know the lines already. Yeah. No, it's great to have you, honestly. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time because uh, I know you're super busy. So um, absolutely delighted to have you on. How have you been, first of all? Good. Well, actually, no, I woke up in a terrible mood for no reason. Yeah, I saw on your Instagram. What, what was the problem? Come on, I let's have a know. bit of a therapy session. Yeah, let's have a therapy session. Um, I think it might be that I'm not eating chocolate at the moment and I'm slightly addicted to it. So possibly that. So I woke up and I was like, I need some sugar. Um, and then, you know, I was walking here and I reminded myself, there's a lot to be happy about, like Arsenal. And I was listening to some stuff on my way and some football chats. And I was like, yeah, I need to get in a good mood because this is a good time. And it might go swiftly downhill at some point, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> if I'd have known, I'd have brought you some chocolate to start off the show. No, because I'm not eating it. Yeah, but, you know, you can make an exception. You know, we want you in a good mood. It's your debut no, on no the show. No one would know apart from everyone watching and listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, great to have you. Um, talk to me a little bit about your career, first of all, because obviously we haven't spoken on a podcast before. Yeah. Um, you're front and centre with the Arsenal, as everyone will know that is watching this, I'm sure. Uh, you do lots of other uh, sort of broadcasting work as well. And your career has been amazing so far from what I can see. Um, so tell us a little bit about it. How did you get into it? When did you know that you wanted to be a presenter? You know what? How I got into it, I'm not going to bore everyone with like, lo the long story of it. But um, it's quite interesting how I kind of got into Arsenal, which was the first like big thing I suppose I did presenting wise. So I, I first started working there six years ago for a couple of years. And then I haven't been there for about four years and now I'm back but it's funny like although I wasn't there for years I would still bump into like the odd person don't get me wrong I don't get recognized often at all but every so often I might bump into someone who was an Arsenal fan or like even just someone within TV and media and they'd be like oh yeah yeah like you work for Arsenal I'm, I'm thinking oh honey I've not been there in like two and a half years but but people would still associate me with Arsenal so it's quite nice that I'm back now because I'm just like yeah 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 we'll, yeah, we'll forget the little <laughs> you don't have to make this small talk about how you're not there currently I wasn't but you there was, for a bit yeah. and then yeah but um I actually got the Arsenal job because I started making a couple of YouTube videos which were terrible genuine like genuinely awful a bit like ours then <laughs> yeah exactly so this is why i feel so comfortable here <laughs> no um oh just so so bad on every level um a couple of sort of post-match reaction ones and this was about six years ago so people were obviously doing it at the time i would say probably not as many females within football um and they got like no views like when i say probably about 49 views um, and it was really scary putting yourself out there as well. Anyway, only made maybe three or four. And then somehow one of the Arsenal media producers saw one of them and then contacted me on Twitter. Um, and they were looking for a presenter. This was when Facebook Live was starting out. And they were looking for a presenter to kind of host live streams with players and whatnot. Um, and so he messaged me and I thought, I was like, I'm being catfished here, but I'm going to go along with the catfish, like, ha ha ha, the laugh's on them. Um, and then when I got an email and it was like at arsenal.co.uk and I was like, oh God, oh my God, he's legit. And I remember going in and I had to do an audition and, and everything. And I was like, oh my God, this is like, this is mad. Like, oh yeah. Um, and then I, luckily I got it. I mean, I don't know why, I was probably terrible, but they must have saw something. Um, yeah, and so I got the job there, and then I was at Arsenal for a couple of years, which I loved. It was, And I did a lot of player-led stuff. So kind of like anyone who's on like Arsenal content, which is great nowadays, by the way. Um, no disrespect to myself back in the day, but, you know, it's like next level is a lot of club social media is, right, yeah. and content. But like Frimmy, the sort of stuff that I guess he's yeah, doing he's now, fantastic. he's, he's so good, it's so good, so funny. Um, it, yeah, it was that sort of player focused stuff, which was awesome. And then, yeah, since then done some really cool stuff. Like um, I hosted a, a Lionesses Daily show, which was out at the Women's World Cup in France a couple of years ago. And that was like a big springboard for me. Um, and like five weeks out in France, with the lionesses, I mean, it was yeah, What's there not to dreamy, like? <laughs> yeah. And then 
just all over the place. I mean, freelance, so you know, like it's a bit, it can be a bit chaotic and like it's wicked because it's so different. Like I might be doing this and then on Saturday morning I might be on Sky Sports doing a show and then I'm doing like some cricket for BBC sometimes. So it's kind of all over the place, but fun. It keeps it new, doesn't it? It keeps yeah, it fresh. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, seeing as you said that you listen to this podcast, yeah. I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh! Tell me one thing that we can do better. Oh, it's a podcast. <laughs> Stop. No, you know what? I, uh, but, no, this, I'm no, but this would be really cringe because it will say, if you, if you gave me more time to think about it, I could probably be semi, like try and come up with something. <laughs> but off the top of my head, there's a reason that I listen to this quite a lot because I, I genuinely enjoy it. I suppose. But I said this to you. You see, now I feel like I'm just... You You just want me to compliment you. No, no, no. I want you to criticise it, genuinely. No, but I said this to you when we met at Arsenal at the women's game the other week. Well, how fun was that day? Um, and I said, I, I was like, I, I really like your podcast and I think you're you're very good at talking like by yourself. Like, I don't know... Is that a, is that a good thing, though? No, it's a great talking thing. Talking by yourself is a bit... Yeah, no, no. Like, it's, <laughs> it's a, a skill in itself like i i ramble on i waffle as everyone probably knows from the past how many minutes it's been but i think there's something so kind of talented and skillful and being able to just sit by yourself and i know like you'll take questions and stuff like that but for however long you just to be able to just speak and make sense and it be oh, fluid it and flow makes sense, though. yeah and also you know what you do <laughs> but i like it you'll you'll have like almost three points for something you'll be like you know, this is the Arsenal that we love for this. This is the Arsenal that, that, that. this is the Arsenal. That, like you'll have a little thing sometimes that you say a, a, a few times. That makes no sense. But people, people listening or watching will know what I mean. Right, that's, that's my note then. <laughs> Stop repeating myself. No, no, I like times. it. You say something different, a different variation, but you'll use the same theme. That makes no sense. Go listen back to yourself. You yeah, know what I mean? I, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, great to have you, as I said. Um, great to, to sort of hear a little bit about your career as well. There. What, so? There you go. Great to have you. Yeah. Great to hear a bit about your career. And, you know, it's great to, like, sometimes you'll do that with Arsenal points. No, no, but I, I like it. It's, <laughs> it's my way of, now that you've pointed it out, yeah. I know what you mean. It's my way of processing what I'm going to say next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what it is. But I think you do it really well. And you, whatever you say always makes sense. Because sometimes I'm like, oh, what's the third one going to be? But you always like... <laughs> what is it? What is it? Is he gonna, <laughs> what else is great? Is he going to screw this one up? <laughs> <laughs> but no, you always nail it. So I'm like, ah, oh, I know what you're doing there. And it's working for you, Harry. Thank you very much. <laughs> but genuinely, in the comments, let us know what you want to see done differently. Because... Um, we always want to make it better. Yeah, like, yeah, that's, yeah. That's always the aim. That's always the goal. Um, let's talk a little bit then about Arsenal's season so far because yeah. it has been amazing. And I keep I saying on this show that I was not emotionally prepared for this at the start of the season. Yes. I'm finding it really tough. Every game means so much. Um, you know, I'm going into an, an FA Cup weekend. Not really sure if I care about the FA Cup. We'll go on to that yeah, yeah, yeah. in a little bit. But what have you made of the season so far? And for you, I mean, being oh, yeah. at the ground, being involved in the production of the match day show, it must be amazing. The place must be buzzing. It is. It's honestly like it's it's so different being back there this time round. And, you know, when I was working there last time, it was Arsene Wenger era. It was coming towards the end of that as well. Um, and, w you know, we'll all know that that was at points, I think it's fair to say, kind of toxic, right? Like sometimes at the Emirates, the atmosphere, you know, you, well, you had fans protesting and whatnot. And it was, it was hard. Like it was a really difficult environment to be in. And you kind of do feel that on the inside and, and media wise as well. You're then really restricted with, with what you can do and what you can say, you have less flexibility. I remember sometimes we'd do some Facebook Live videos with players and, you know, the comments, which I generally wouldn't read, but there'd be a kind of current, uh, a recurring theme of people being like, oh, why are they Why are they here doing stuff like this? They should be out training. And it's like, no, hun, hun they, they train. They, they, yeah, they, this is in addition. They, yeah, yeah, this is not. like after training, a little media session. Um, and it was you just couldn't kind of do anything. Whereas you'll see now, I mean, God, the Emirates, again, as, you, as you'll know, it's so different. The noise, just everything about it, the energy, it's, it's so amazing. And I've been able to 
bring my mum to games like the North London Derby at Emirates, which for her, a lifelong Arsenal fan, um, she'd never been to a North London Derby. And she was like, oh my God, I just saw her at one point just standing outside before kickoff, just like standing there, but looking out. Just taking just it watching. Away. Yeah, and I was just like, oh, this is so nice. Um, and she was like, I can't, I can't believe what it's like here now. And I was like, I know, but this is like the new Arsenal. Just, yeah, everything, everything about it, us as fans, I think that belief, the players, I think, again, though, I think, and I know everyone has spoken about this already, but I think the Amazon Prime documentary, I think just the general access that we've had to this group of players and the insight and what we can see of them and their personalities, I think that's also really helped. Yeah, it's, it's helped people feel that connection Connected. to them, I think. You feel more invested in this group than you've probably felt in previous groups. And it's interesting because you say like you've got a little bit more flexibility now. Obviously, when you're doing the show that you do, mm. you know, it can't just be everything's perfect. Like there are going to be games where the team doesn't play well. And yeah. there are going to be games where you need to analyze some things that maybe aren't so, so positive. And, and as working for the club, you kind of don't want to be, I understand it. Like you, you can't be too sort of harsh, but obviously when you're winning games, you can Dream. now, yeah, and, and you can now be that little bit critical without mm. it being the thing that everybody takes away because ultimately it's outweighed by the victory. Yeah, and that's such a good point because, you know, actually sometimes, and Adrian Clark, who I do the show with, he'll, he'll say this sometimes where, you know, he does like the, the shows, the, the breakdown live, but he'll yeah. do the breakdown, which some of you might have seen on, on social media of like the previous game. And he says, sometimes it's actually more fun for him to do that when we've not played so well, because there's not as much to talk about yeah. when things keep going so well. And in a way, it can be similar with a show. Like, obviously, you want the results that we've been having. And, you know, you can't speak highly enough time, time after time about Odegaard or whoever. But sometimes there's actually not that many different angles to, yeah, yeah, to yeah, yeah, go sure. out because things are just good and it's repetitively good but yeah like the first time around we would never even the show now we on home games we have a live audience in in the studio where we do it and so we can speak to fans which is great like I love that aspect of it as well years ago oh we would never ever yeah. have been able to do that we couldn't do fan based stuff because especially live you, you don't know, you what, you're you get, don't yeah. know what you're gonna get is that something that's come from the club like as in you know, we kind of need to be more in line with the fans. Do you think that that's something that they've actively tried to introduce? Or do you think that that was just kind of the next step naturally? I think so. I think they, they probably actively wanted to get fans more involved. Um, but again, it, it is easier when things are good. Yeah. Because also, it, it, even if we have the odd bad result, right? I wasn't working the Man United away game. But when something like that happens, because everyone is in such good spirits around this team and there's so much kind of goodwill in the bank i suppose at the yeah. moment even that you could still trust all the fans to speak because worst case they might again we know that we we played well in that game anyway so worst case at the moment as as we're playing we might not get a result that goes our way but we've we've probably played pretty well so any fan that's gonna or even adrian and i or nick bright when he hosts the show when we're talking it can be constructive criticism yeah but it's always going to be a fairly positive vibe at the moment because things are so good so it does it does make from a media and, and you standpoint need that. You, you need that constructive criticism because yeah you know fans i think nowadays have got access to way more content than they've ever had mm -hmm. and are probably more educated around the sport in general yeah. than they've ever been. So you don't want someone to be telling you that everything is 100% no, positive when not. it's not. It's irritating. You don't want that. Equally, you don't want that toxicity that you get in other mm -hmm. places. Won't mention any names, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, um, but it's tricky because the first time around when things weren't great, again, because I am freelance, if I was going on another show or doing something else and, you know, they want to talk to me about Arsenal, even if it wasn't specifically because I worked there, it would be really hard because you don't want to, you know, lose your credibility as a, a presenter or, a, you know, someone who's in football by trying to be really positive if your team are, are really not in good form. But then when you represent the club, 
you also can't be there yeah. slagging anyone off. So it puts you in a really weird position. But right now, as you all know, it's great. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that this is kind of the final question, then we'll chat about actual, like today, we've gone off on the tangent. If we've got anyone still yeah, watching. Yeah, if we've got too. anyone still watching, but all good. Um, do you find though that you probably, in your career, you, you have to make a choice. Do I want to be a presenter or mm. do I want to be something else? Because for me, I, I'm very much don't really want to be a presenter because yeah. I feel like then I wouldn't be able to give opinions as much. Mm. And to me, that is the whole basis of my content. If you take that capability yeah. away from me, then what am I making? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think that you've ever come to that point where you've had to decide one way or the other? Not so much because I, I don't do what you are so good at doing. Saying three, doing. things three times. <laughs> Repetitive. <laughs> no, not at all. Like content, right? Creating content. I don't really do that myself because I don't think I'd be that good at it. And you know, you'd um, be fine. No, no. But so I'm quite happy to sit on the other side of it where almost like I ask you kind of the reverse of what we're doing in a way, but I like to be able to ask the questions. And also you can, a lot of things nowadays, because the way media is consumed and stuff is so different, you can give your opinion more, right? As like a host or presenter, yeah. it can be a lot more integrated. Um, but I kind of like asking the question and then sitting back. Like I did um, a, a live podcast thing, um, just at the start of the World Cup with, um, I feel like this is going to seem like I'm name dropping. They're not even that like great names, but it was um, like Graham Souness, Big Sam, Sam Allardyce and Simon Jordan. I'll stop name dropping. No, Nicole. but the Come reason on. I'm saying Come that on. is because anyone who knows them will know that they are very opinionated. They like come at each other. And what was great is I would just ask, drop a little question in and just sit back and watch it. Um, it's like pulling the pin out of a grenade, yeah, dropping yeah, it and walking away. Yeah, and they're going at each other. And what they were saying was interesting. And they're like really arguing. And I like that side of it where you can just like sit back and just kind of watch it all unfold. <laughs> <laughs> so are you like that on a night out? Do you like to go and start the trouble? And then <laughs> I don't away? go out anymore, Harry. I'm, I'm in bed by like half ten. Not that I sleep very well, but I'm in bed at half ten. You're not the only one. Yeah, You're just chilling. One. I'm so boring these days. A little <laughs> cup of hot milk. That's it. But, and you still wake up in a bad mood. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm generally quite a happy person. This is actually cheering me up, to be fair. So thank you. There we go. You. It's working. There we go. Um, okay. Man City away in the FA Cup. Yeah. I'll give sort of my take on mm. how I feel about this one, but I'll get yours first. Yeah, because I asked you earlier and you were like, let's save it. Yep, save it. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really know how to feel about this game. Yeah. Did a podcast last night with, with some friends and... I was asked the question and I kind of started off with one opinion and then talked myself into having a different mm -hmm. view by the time the podcast ended. I mean, it can't be a priority for Arsenal no. this year, right? I, I'm, I'm exactly the same as you because that's why I, I said to you earlier, like, how do you feel about tomorrow night? Because part of me, I think because it's because it's Man City that we've got this conflict, right? Because yeah, if it absolutely. wasn't, then yeah, it yeah. wouldn't be a thing. Obviously, I think the focus, of course, needs to be on the league or and Europa League, really, for me. But because it's Man City and we're yet to play them in the league, as we all know, there's that added thing of you don't want to be embarrassed. Not that I think we will be embarrassed at all. But although we might not care about staying in the cup, if we don't put in a great performance or if City, I was going to say a, a rude word, if City, you know, muller us. You can say a rude word. Can I? I don't, uh, know, what, yeah. I don't know what the etiquette was on here. Um, <laughs> it's not classy. <laughs> <laughs> we're not a classy establishment. But, you know, if, if the result was really bad, then I, I wa worry if that would affect confidence, uh, our momentum, because we're in such a good place at the moment, how we're playing, the spirit, the energy, the, the confidence within the team, the players themselves. I, I just, I'd, I'd slightly worry about that. I think we could also bounce back from that because as we've seen this season, and that is what I'm loving about Arsenal at the moment is it's so nice. And I feel like other people probably have this as well. It is so nice to watch us. And even if we go one nil down, like we did against United, to be able to be like, that's all right. Cause I think we'll, we'll get a goal. And that's what I feel is so different to the past however many years. So, 
it's not that I think if we lost against City that that's going to be, oh my God, it's going to be devastating. But you do, you do want to show what we can do and everyone is going to be watching this, te- this game because it's these two teams. And I just think in a way we want to show what we can do and, and set, up, set the tone for when we face them in the league. But on the flip side, don't we want to rest our, our best players but then I know that there's a, a, quite a, a gap in between the next fiction. Oh, this is what I mean. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. So essentially, Harry, I don't know how I feel. You can go around in circles <laughs> on this all day. This is the yeah. problem. Like, I agree with you that I worry about the repercussions of a serious beating. Yeah. And we know that if Arsenal make wholesale changes, there's a good chance that Manchester City win and win mm-hmm. comfortably. Yeah. You know, and when I say wholesale changes, I'm talking Turner in goal. Yeah. I'm talking you know, uh, holding at centre-back uh, along with one of the others. You know, you're talking about Lekonga in midfield. We know that Mohamed Elneny is unavailable, Injured, yeah, yeah. which is unfortunate. I'm talking about Fabio Vieira coming into the team. So it's not that I don't like these players. Yeah. I just feel like in some areas, especially, we are really weak, weak yeah. beyond the, the first choice. And so I don't think there's much value in, in going with a half-and-half half team. So I don't think there's much value in going with... You know, your first choice centre-backs, but then a week in midfield mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or vice versa. So I think you either go all the way and you make wholesale changes and you completely change the team. And if you do get beat, you write it off and you say, well, we didn't care anyway. <laughs> we didn't care. This wasn't our team, mm. you know, and I think whatever team Mikel picks is going to play a part on the, the psychological bit as well, because, you know, there will be first team players and, and first choice players that will look at that team and go, well, clearly my manager doesn't think that this is a priority. And so if we get beat, it'll probably be easier to move on from. Yeah, yeah. But there's the other part of me that thinks that, you know, Manchester City definitely won't be taking this seriously or as seriously as Do you not they think? might have done in recent... No, I think Pep Guardiola has always been very uh, reluctant to put his eggs in the FA Cup basket. I think he's always looked at the Carabao Cup, League Cup, whatever you want to call it, and gone, it's an opportunity to get yeah, silverware so early in the season, Mm -hmm. done. The FA Cup has always felt like a distraction to him. And for me, his priority this season will be the Champions League. Mm -hmm. And you you need more to win the Champions League than you do the Europa League. So for me, I think for City, this is even less important. But they have the home advantage and they have the depth. That means that they can make those changes and probably get away with it. So it's hard. I think either you go there and you say, right, let's play our first team. If we get something here, or if we at least perform psychologically, we go into those two games with City in the league, knowing we can match them and knowing we're as good as them. Or you say, I'm not going to run the risk of getting beat from fear of a psychological Mm, knock-on effect of a defeat. And you go, yeah, just just scrap it. I don't don't know what to do. I'm leaning towards making loads of changes and just saying, F it, it is what it is. Two things there. A, like how big of a statement do you think it would be if we do play a, a strong squad and beat them. Do you think that will just give us that extra? It might. Mm. And, and we're talking about a young team, uh, a young group of players, generally speaking, that you know have gone up against City in recent seasons and have never come out on yeah. top. So maybe it is what we need. But by that same token, it's whether you think the negative that could potentially come from it mm. is bigger than the positive. Because I don't think that the positive will be as, that powerful. I think you'll still look at City in the league and go, well, this is a different outfit, better team. Now there's something really up for grabs with regards to what the two teams are prioritising. So actually, does it... But the uh, thing is, I don't, see, I don't see Arteta putting out a really weak... Because I, I completely get where you're coming from. You're sitting in the middle is a bit... It's just yeah. kind of non-committal and could do more damage in a way. But I don't see him fielding a really weak team but against the problem is, Man like, City. There's a couple of positions, right? So let's take the centre of midfield. Mm-hmm. With Noel Nenny, yeah. you kind of have to play Partey, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, you do, yeah. Yeah. And if you play Partey, you run a massive risk with Thomas Partey. We've only got one centre forward fit and available at the yeah, club at the yeah, moment yeah. in Eddie and Ketia. So that's so another gonna, player yeah, yeah. that I'd want to wrap up in cotton wool. You know, I think there are certain players that he could benefit. I think Martinelli's not been yeah, at his bring brilliant in Trossard, best. Did you? Yeah, I'd probably bring Start in Trossard. Trossard. Um, I'd probably leave Saka out, give him a break. And li- I'd, I'd probably leave Martinelli because I think his form's not been as mm-hmm. good of late and it mm-hmm. might help him to kind of play his way through it. So I guess if I had to pick a team, should we do this? Shall I pick a full team? Yeah, I don't know on. if I should do this. Um, Are you doing Turner? 
Yeah. Yeah, I, I would play Turner. Yeah. I think that's fair. I think you've got to give him an opportunity in the cup. Otherwise, when is he going to play? Yeah. So Turner, I'd go with White because he came off early against Interesting. Okay. Uh, United. He came off at half time, yeah. so he should have, in theory, another 45 minutes in the tank. I'd probably go with... Uh, you know what? I've changed. I'm gonna. I'm gonna end up going with. Yeah, him. but I was gonna say it sounds like you're gonna end up going quite strong. Well, I'd then. go Tierney at left back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, but then again, to me, that's not like a, really a downgrade, is no, it? Like here and Tierney, he's. I, I still think he's great. What do you make of all the chat about him? Sort of over the last few days, Arsenal fans suggesting that maybe he should move on. I, I've read a lot of. That Have you? I was yeah. gonna say who's saying that. Yeah, there's been Can't a lot of it me. on social media. There's been a lot of it. Oh, I I don't like that. I I still am I the only one that still really rates Kieran Tierney and has seen like what he's done as an Arsenal player. I I, I think he's still got I think he's still got stuff in him. I, yeah, I dis I disagree with that. With you're Kieran not Tierney, you're not so much of a fan. It's not that I'm not a fan. Mm. I, I really like him as a left back, but mm. I think he's a really orthodox left back mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. likes to play in a certain way tucks in close to the center half when you're out of possession wants the bomb on the outside when you're in possession and i just think like watching zinchenko week in week out i know he's great it has shone a light on teams. maybe his limitations yeah limitations is the right word or the fact that tactically he's not as versatile because we've asked him at times to tuck inside and play in that inverted role that that zinchenko mm. does so well and he just doesn't look right in it for me so it's not to like, but saying that if one of them had to go up against Mo Salah, for example, I know Mikel Arteta went with Tommy Asu, mm. so it's a bit of a moot point. But if he had to go up against a top right winger, I would trust Tierney on the defensive side more than Zinchenko. And surely, so, surely as like a backup option. Oh, he's fantastic Kieran for that. Tierney, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Can you imagine a couple of years ago if we knew? Because remember how bad we were <laughs> defensively in some yeah. of the plays that we had. Imagine if you knew that Kieran Tierney would end up being a second option you'd be grabbing at him wouldn't you yeah for sure it's just i don't know i just think in this current system the way it all works yeah. the way yeah Mikel arteta has put it together i just think zinchenko is better suited yeah. it's more of a leader i know that people the way he yeah it's mad i yeah. love it but no i do i do i do love zinchenko but i i think that's harsh on tierney if people are genuinely saying that he he shouldn't have a place in the club anymore no i yeah i, I agree with that i I think he d deserves a place at the club. Mm. I just, I don't think he's the first choice anymore. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't think anyone can make a case otherwise. You know, when you look at the effect and impact that Zinchenko mm. has on the team, how mm. can you argue it? I just think that he's been amazing. He's yeah. a, people talked about Tierney as being a leader. Is he really a leader as a captain, potentially? Remember when the whole debate was going around, mm -hmm. should it be Odegaard, should it be him? I think actually the club and Arteta have been proven right in the decisions they've taken. Well, they've been proven uh, right with a, a lot of things, haven't they, to it. be fair? That's it, exactly. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I can say that because whenever I say anything remotely positive about Arsenal or Arteta on this podcast, I get the whole, you're on the payroll business. Oh, really? Oh, that. what are they going to say about me yeah, then? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, watch it. Um, but yeah, so that's, okay, so I'll go Tierney left back. I'll go White at right back. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to see Rob Holding in the centre of defence. So what are you going to do, Gabriel and Saliba? I think so. I think so. But then all, already, though, then it's this yeah, heart. Yeah, I know. Then I've, I've done exactly what I said I wouldn't do. But, the, but this is what I mean. So I don't want to be Mikel Arteta in, in this situation mm. because I think it is a really, a really tough one. And I'm really interested to see what he does decide to do. I find it interesting as well as a fan base like to know what people think and what they'd want to see. Like, would people be disappointed if he... I, d I also just don't see him playing a, re a, a, a weak team. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes full. Strength. full. Yeah, because also maybe he wants to see, we've got this momentum, we're looking really good. We've just beaten some of the, the top sides in the past few weeks. Like, maybe Mikel wants to see where we are at. Because also yeah. City, they're going to play Haaland. They're, you know, they're, they've got that depth that... Even if they play... If they don't play Haaland, they play Alvarez, who's just gonna, won the World Cup. Do you know what so, I mean? Like, yeah. you play a slightly weakened team and they're still going to be absolute superstars, aren't they? So, you know whoever we're coming up against, they're going to be a very good side to test ourselves. So, maybe it is a good time to... I think momentum is a great point that you make because yeah. Mikel, I think, has shown that that means a lot to him mm -hmm. already. Um, if you go back to some of the Europa League group games this year... 
there were games I thought he could have got away with a much weaker side than yeah. the one he picked, but he didn't want to lose that rhythm and, and mm-hmm. momentum. So, yeah, you, you could be onto something there. Um, how do you think it's going to go then? Or, or is that dependent on the team? Because for me, it very much is. It's so hard to put a prediction on this. The thing is, Harry, I don't, I don't want to say... I don't want to say that we'd, we'd, we'll, <laughs> that we'd lose. It does depend on the team. But... I, because this isn't our focus, I wouldn't be surprised if Man City did win because, hey, we know how good they are. And I wouldn't be that worried about it because the league, to me, is going to be a, a different thing entirely um, when we come up against them in the Premier League with what we know we have riding on it. I just think it's just a, a different talking point to tomorrow night's game. So I, I wouldn't be... And we're going to have some blips, I think, at, at points uh, along the season. So I wouldn't be surprised if City did... Ju- I think it'll be close. I think it'll be really close either way. Wouldn't be massively surprised if it was a draw. But A replay, that is not yeah. what we need, is it? No, I know. Oh, I don't, what, what, do you, what do you think? <laughs> How do you think it's going to go? I think City win. Do you? Oh, yeah. you're saying that with chess. You're yeah, more yeah I think City win. I think that they've got... A, depth, a lot more depth really. to be able to rotate effectively. Yeah. I think they've also... We put a lot into that Man United game at the weekend. I know that one of the classic things that people always say about the FA Cup is it's not like the League Cup. You're not playing on a Tuesday or Wednesday night. It's not an additional game. It's your game for the yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. has its own weekend. Fine, I get that. But they've got a lot more depth to be able to rotate. I'm sure that Pep Guardiola will have some of those big guns on the bench if he needs them as well. Mm-hmm. They're at home. Um, and, and all of those things just... We know how loud the Etihad is. The empty hand, as they call it. <laughs> it won't be empty tomorrow because there'll be 8,000 Arsenal fans going up there, which Oof. is amazing. Um, really amazing. I'm a little bit... So I'm working the game. Yeah. Um, I'm covering it for, for BBC London. And I'm actually... Now, the more I think about it, I wish I was in the away end. Mm-mm. And it's like, you know, you, you want to be part of it, but you've got to stay but You'll be there, like, still yeah, be able to stay yeah, the I just, I don't know. I don't know about you, but I find it really hard at work sometimes to stay in my lane. Well, I don't need to because yeah. I'm working for Arsenal, yeah, exactly. so I can literally just go mental. I, I remember the Liverpool game when, obviously, we, we won that one. And I remember when the last goal went in and um, I was sitting next to the commentary team for Five Live. Yeah. And there was a producer with them who was clearly a Liverpool fan. And she had said to me like, oh, you know, it's, it's not, you know, you, it's better when there's not someone like involved in these two clubs. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to say to you I'm an Arsenal fan. Then I'm just going to keep quiet. And then the final goal went in. And I went mad. I was banging on the table and all sorts. And I just got this look and I was like, yeah, I better stop. <laughs> Professional better stop. hat yeah, on. Exactly. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think City win it. Um, I don't want that to be the case. Obviously, I'd rather we, we get through mm-hmm. um, because you'd always rather continue on in these competitions. But I'm just worried that if we spread ourselves too thin across too many competitions, yeah. it could be our undoing. We've had periods, haven't we, in the past as Arsenal fans where everything's blown up in a week. Mm-hmm. And I just, I'm so fearful. No, but that. that's what, I, and I think a lot of us feel the same way where... It's like PTSD, you know, isn't it? Yeah, but there's also each game, like against Spurs, it was like, Everyone around me saying, oh, "Do you think? Do you think we're gonna win the league?" And I'd be like, oh, let, "Let's see after the Spurs game." And then it's like, "Okay, let's see after the Man United game." And then each time, right, and you keep pushing like the the goalpost further and further because. And then it's like, at what point do you go? Oh no, yeah, I think we can. On the final day of the season. Yeah, no, I know. I hope it doesn't get to that point because I, I can't. I'm not gonna lie. I did message my producer after the Man United game, of the Arsenal show, and I said. Okay, like I am working like like the final game, and also if we win and we do a victory parade show, I'm working. I'm t- I'm working it. And he was like, yeah, no, no, like you would be. So like you know, we're kind of already slightly thinking about uh, it, and no, like no, I'm not. I know I don't want to jinx, touch all the wood. So I I kept saying everybody kept saying to me, are we going to win it? You know, can you say now that Arsenal are the favourites? I've got a, a WhatsApp group that I'm in with some of my friends who for weeks have been trying to get me to say, yeah, Arsenal are the favourites to win the Premier League, and I won't do it. Yeah, they're going to screenshot and I, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I said, ask me after Spurs like you, ask me after United like you, and then they asked me after United, and I said, ask me after Everton, Brentford, and Man City, and they're like, come on, man, this is you're point? taking the piss now. Like you just yeah, keep pushing yeah. it. But it is what it is. Um, 
transfer window so far, uh, Leandro Trossard's come in, uh, Jakub Kivior's come in as well. Obviously, we missed out on Mikhailo Madrid. A lot of Arsenal fans were disappointed by that. But yeah. Trossard feels like a good acquisition. What did you make of his little cameo on um, on Sunday? Yeah, I thought he was good. I thought, you know what though, as a player, God, what a time to come into this Arsenal side. Like, everything about it, the the dressing room, the energy, obviously how well we're doing, right? But I think as a group of mainly young players, you know what you're coming into. And Trossard, obviously, he's a, a bit older. Older, but, in, you know, in footballing Still terms. Still younger than me. Yeah, <laughs> in footballing terms. But... You'd be so excited to come into that. And because because we've got that belief, that energy, you are going to want to put everything out there. And like you could see that in him. I, lo- I loved his, his little debut. I mean, obviously, it was quite brief. Um, I think he's a good signing. He's one that, obviously, I know a lot of Arsenal fans, I think some people were maybe underwhelmed about it, which is kind of fair enough in a way. It's not that, like big name and light signing, right? But I think it's a really practical signing. Um, The Mudrick stuff as well, that was, I find all of that, honestly, I found that all really baffling, just in terms of like, he must must be so embarrassed. I think from what, again, the brief stint that we've seen from him so far, I think he does look good, to be fair. Because I've seen a lot of, it is funny, Arsenal fans on Twitter were trying to like look out for any like wrongdoings that he was making. And I was like, come on guys, he's, He's he's gonna be. I think he's gonna be very good, um, and he's definitely one to watch for the future for sure. Um, but I just thought that was all a bit strange for him. But what was nice is that he clearly. It was so nice to have a player that was clearly very sought after, desperately wanting to come to us. I feel like we've kind of maybe lacked that as well in the past he, few years. Do you think he was that desperate though? Because could he not have? I know, obviously, it was between Shakhtar and Arsenal, right? And Arsenal needed to cough up what Shakhtar wanted. They didn't. Chelsea did, and there it was. Is it not fair to say that Mikhailo Mudrik's desire to join the Premier League superseded his desire then to join Arsenal? Because he could have... He could have said, I'm not making that move now because I yeah, want Yeah, but do you think, do you, is it that easy though? Again, I don't, right, it could be. I don't know enough about all the aspects of things that happen behind the scenes uh, in regards to transfers. But I, I just think, unless he's really dumb, you, you don't put yourself out there that much on social media, on everything, and be that kind of vocal about wanting a move to such a specific club unless you really, really want it and you're really trying to push for it, I think that would be quite strange because then, again, it puts himself in an awkward position where you then get signed by a rival club and all those fans have seen that you've yeah. been just basically advertising that you want to move to Arsenal. That puts yourself in a weird place with the fan base. So I don't think you do that unless you really, really do want to go to that one specific club. But who knows, right? Yeah. Who knows what was going through his head? Um, but no, Trossard. I think, I think he's a, a good signing. I think look, a, a great option as a, a second option to bring on. Right, Premier League proven. And that's what's really nice is that I think we we trust him and Mikel Arteta will trust him to just come in Spot as him. he's done and straight away. Like he knows he knows the players that he's coming up against. Like he'll get us goals. I I, I think he'll be a smart I think he's a smart addition to to this squad. Um obviously like I'm sure every other Arsenal fan, I'd like to see something else before the end of the transfer window. Ideally midfield, right? Because of the part but but Mikel Arteta basically said that himself in what yesterday's, yesterday's press conference. Project, yeah. Like uh, you know, we, we see what he's like in these press conferences. He, he doesn't give much away, does he? Oh, he is a journalist's nightmare. <laughs> yeah. He honestly yeah, is. Yeah, like, no, I bet. He, he is, like, I've spoken to some people that are, like, always in there. Like, I've been in there a, a fair few times this season, and I've asked him maybe three or four questions. And to be fair, he's always given me, like, a really nice answer. Right. But I've not gone for the, like... Oh, you know, tell us who's coming in or any of that. I've gone for, like I've I've asked him questions about individual players' performances mm-hmm. or tactical aspects of the game because that's what interests me. But when you ask him anything remotely controversial, he just shuts it down. But then there's and no point. I'd say you're smart for not asking him yeah, those questions. What's the po- exactly. Yeah. What's the point? Yeah. You're going to get nothing. I know that as a as a journalist, right? You, it's kind of your job because sometimes people on social media will be like, "Why is that person asking this?" You know, you might have pressure as well from your outlet 
from the newspaper, whatever you work for, to ask specific questions. But especially with someone like Arteta, he's made it very clear now what he will and won't answer. So you're just wasting a question, aren't you? Because yeah. he's, And he's never going to be baited, really, either. So, yeah, he doesn't give give much away at all. But he basically said, as, as close to he, I think, will ever say, that, yeah, we kind of need another defensive midfielder, really, to, to bring in. Like, we're, we're lacking options. Um, so that's kind of what we need. We're obviously being linked with every Tom, Dick and Harry. <laughs> yeah, um, literally me as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Which is always like, I don't know, I, I take... I take all of that with a pinch of salt. Like, I know you guys obviously talk a lot about potential transfers on, on shows, and I listen to a few different shows that revolve around potential transfers and rumours. But we've got to... You take Absolutely, it with a pinch yeah. of salt. And I, I always make a point of saying, like, I, I'm not in the know. I don't yeah, know yeah, any more yeah. than you do. Yeah. So what I like to do is not bring you news, because it's not news. It's yeah. not from me. Fake I don't news. have a clue. It's fake news in it a lot of the time. What I like to do is give my opinion on those reports because I, I, I don't have a line in. I don't know what Mikel Arteta's yeah. up to. I don't know what Edu had for breakfast. Like, yeah. I don't, I'm not. You don't? Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. You probably do, but I don't. <laughs> no, you know what? I saw him in, in person at the um, Arsenal Stadium artwork launch. What a man. <laughs> and he walked past me, Harry. It was actually so cringe. But okay, I'll, I'll tell you all. He walked past. And I don't know why. I just wasn't. A, I turned around and like he just walked. Like, he was right there. So I just went, Edu like that and he was like hello <laughs> and then walked off and you know you're like why did why did that come out of my mouth like that was like i'd like to think i'm quite cool enough around like people in the industry or whatever like i was like that was creepy nicole don't on a lot you have of levels. those don't you have those moments where like you're in a room with people that you would love to go and get a selfie with but you're like must remain professional cannot ask for a selfie well Kind of, but then I saw Odegaard yeah. and I ran over. Yeah. <laughs> well, because, yeah, no, sometimes you are like that. And and I was there and I was like, oh, he's, he's in the corner. I, I'd really like a picture with him. And I was like, you know what, just do it. Just do it, because why not? He doesn't care. Like, yeah, so I was like, hi, Martin. Can I have a picture, please? <laughs> in that weird, really English Oliver Twist accent. <laughs> no, I had it, um, the uh, Wenger Invincible film premiere. Yeah, yeah. I was there and I was like, oh my God, Arsene Wenger's here, Mikel Arteta's here, Edu's here, I need a picture. But then I probably would have gone and done it, but I had a colleague from work with me yeah. who had told me in the past, Not you don't do that, it look, makes you look really unprofessional. So in my head, I'm like, is this guy gonna go to the loo or something so I can go and grab a <laughs> selfie with like Mikel Arteta yeah. or something? In the end, when most people had left, and there was no one to be ashamed around. I went and took pictures with Arteta, Edu, yeah, Venga. I was like, yeah, You're like, I'm lads, doing it. Lads, yeah, yeah. come in, group pick. I mean, all of them looked like they didn't want to be in the picture. Like, they all looked fed up of the fact that I was asking for it. But it is oh, it is. I know, but for you, like, and, and sometimes, and I think, you know, when I'm, like, older and maybe have kids or whatever, I'm like, yeah, I'll be the cool mum. Because I'll say, look, at all, all of this stuff. And my mum, bless her, she's over the years, like, printed out all pictures and stuff. Um, and like moments from my career and she's made like this scrapbook which is really cringe but also very sweet um <laughs> and like just to have those sort of memories i'm like why not because also as you'll know there are however many arsenal fans out there and around the world that would love to have that opportunity to be yeah, able to absolutely. and sometimes i think it's for me like it would be more embarrassment that i don't ask um and so yeah i'm trying to get better at like no i want that picture yeah just do Ask it. it in a non Oliver Twist cringy <laughs> way is yeah. the way forward. Yeah. Hello. Can I have a picture, please? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, c completely agree. Um, talking about what we need in the transfer window, then you, you said midfield. Yeah, I agree yeah. with you. One of my, I don't know if I should call it a frustration, but one of the things that kind of, I don't even want to say it's gotten under my skin. I, I don't really know how to put this. Come talk to me. Let me be, this is my therapy session. Safe now. space. Yeah, safe space. Exactly. I, f I knew that we needed another centre-back. Mm -hmm. I knew that we needed a left-sided centre-back. I knew that that was on the agenda. But to prioritise right that now. ahead of bringing a midfielder in, to me, makes no sense. Which suggests to me that Mikel Arteta and Edu felt that if El Elneny was fit, they mm -hmm. had sufficient cover. Okay. And now he's injured, they might be forced into the market. I would argue that even with El Elneny fit, we're still we weak need, in, yeah. that in that area. Uh, yeah, and yeah. that has that would be my regret 
if we finish this window without another signing. But I also understand that the money's not unlimited and that KSE are putting money in and they're mm-hmm. helping out and they're doing what they're doing, but they're doing it so that they can get us back in the Champions League and then reap the rewards from that. There is going to come a point where there's going to be no more money or mm-hmm. less money because the heavy lifting around this squad has already been done. So I get all that, but it just feels to me like given where we are in the league, given our position currently, we'd be seriously missing a trick if we don't go and bring a midfield player in. I agree. And I I, I would argue, I mean, again, goes without saying I'm not in the know with this sort of stuff at all. Um, I... I would imagine that they still wanted to get a midfielder in because even the Trossard thing kind of came out of nowhere, right? We weren't being linked to him as far as I was he, aware anyway. As far as I was aware, he was headed for Spurs. No, yeah, it was like, eh? yeah. well, what's happened there? So I think there's probably a lot of these conversations and things that are happening that David Ornstein or whoever Fabrizio you know, aren't reporting on and don't know and, and are kept quite hush-hush. So I'd imagine that they would have been looking at another midfield option because... Look at how well we're doing. We know that we just if we just bring in a few more players, add to our, our, our squad depth a bit, then we're just really increasing our chances of being able to win the league. And they know that. Of, of course, they're not silly. They've made a lot of very, very good decisions, right? So I'm, I'm generally quite confident in what Edu and, and Mikel do and what they deem worth doing in, in, tra- in the transfer window in the season in general. But I can only think that they they saw I don't know that as a signing not that we needed a a left-sided centre-back right now like you're saying no but maybe that was just a side bit of business that they saw that they thought oh okay we can do that now we think he's got a lot of potential we really like him decent price right there's always less competition in January for players as well yeah if you identify a player you know you want him you know that you're going to probably do it in the summer in January, where a lot of clubs are more reluctant to spend, you probably think, well, let's steal a march and do it now yeah. to not have that crap that comes in the summer, the bidding wars left, right and centre. Yeah. So, yeah, I get that. They might have just thought, oh, as a, as a side signing, right player for us, we think, for the future, for now, whatever, decent price, so, that's a worthy bit of business. We'll do that separately. I, I, I don't think that that would impact. I think they are certainly looking at midfielders. They've, they've got to be. And again, we... They know what they're they're doing. I think we we can give them a lot of trust and faith right now, right? So I think that they know what they've got to do. The problem we're going to have, and that's why you're seeing 75 million and, and, and a big money, you know, being thrown about in the media at the moment for certain players that probably aren't worth it, is that clubs know that we need yeah. someone, we need reinforcements in certain positions. And because it's January and they don't want to let go of certain players, they're just going to go, oh, okay, you want him? You're going to have to pay... 500 million and try and kind of put us off by crazy price tags. So what will be interesting is, you know, what we're going to potentially pay for someone. I wouldn't be surprised if we end up like someone rogue comes out of. Yeah, someone we'd never even yeah, thought of. That no one's discussed on any form of like platform. <laughs> that, and then we'll probably go, oh, OK. Yeah, that kind of works. I, I think, yeah, we've got to have enough faith and belief. Look, if, if we don't make another signing from now until the end of the transfer window i'd be surprised i'd be a bit a bit disappointed i suppose just because right now i love what we've got going on but you worry if if we have any more injury concerns you do worry yeah. that we've got that depth there so tbc but TBC. um the worry comes from the fact that we know we're in with a shout of achieving something that of course we didn't even dream of at the start of the season if you told me that the goal now was just to finish in the top four, I'd probably make the case that actually the squad is fine yeah. and I wouldn't reinforce it. But it's just what might take us to that slightly next level that gets us ultimately where we want to be that you know scares me. You mentioned sort of side business, which made me think about sides, side dishes. Do you eat McDonald's? Uh, yeah, why? If you, do, you, <laughs> do you have a McDonald's meal with sides? Do oh, you, no, but I mean, maybe it depends on how many drinks I've had in the club. I don't go clubbing anymore. Um, but <laughs> I haven't been clubbing for about, oh, wait. I can't even remember how many years. So you mean like, say I went Big Mac meal, would I get chicken nuggets on the side? Yes, exactly. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or like a little McFlurry, but that's dessert. Nah, yeah, that doesn't count as okay, a side. Fine. Side has to be food, not dessert. Right, right, right. So yeah. Okay, fine. Another random tangent for you there. Nicole Holiday likes sides with her McDonald's. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, brilliant stuff. Okay, um, I think... Hold on, yes. question for you. Go on. Curious. Go on. If, because you were saying about... Um, Look at my face, I'm worried about where this question's going. <laughs> 
no, because your point about, um, you know, if the aim was just to finish in the top four, blah, 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 would we need reinforcements? Would you now be, how disappointed would you be if we just finished in the top four? Do you know what I mean? Like fourth, third or fourth? Um, I'd be disappointed if we finished below second now. Yeah, okay. If we were to lose out on the Premier League title by a handful of points because Manchester City went on one of those incredible runs or we which fell. Which we know they can do, yep, right? Yeah, exactly, mm. which we know they can do. Or we fell a little bit short. We were unlucky along the way. It would be really hard to process at the time. Mm-hmm. But when the dust settles, I'd look back and say, what an incredible season, what an incredible ride. Yeah. But a third or fourth place finish now, given the way the table looks, just feels a bit meh. Like, it, it, I don't know. Ultimately, yeah. we'd have achieved what we needed to which was to get in the Champions League but it would be underwhelming yeah but that's what is kind of nice right now is that we would never have imagine at the start of the season someone said how disappointed would you be if Arsenal finished third or fourth I'd You'd have be like, Wait, jumping what? up and down if we finished fourth so, <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. It's... so it's so nice that we're in this place where that would feel like a, a big disappointment, really. Like, things are good, Harry. I know, but it's the hope <laughs> know, that kills it's you. It's stressful. I know, I know, because it is getting closer. I put something on my Instagram story the other day, being like, after the Man United win, just being like, right, so um, when do I start planning what to wear for the victory parade? And then I was like, oh, my God, I can't even believe I've said that, because what if I now jinx it? And like, I hope you deleted that. Sure. <laughs> well, it's deleted now because only last 24 hours. Thank God for that. But, yeah, it's like a, it's a weird place to be. And I think a lot sooner than we were expecting to be thinking about the title race, winning the league. But we're in it and it's going well. And, and I think in a way we might look back and be like, what a shame that we couldn't just enjoy it whilst it was happening. You know, yeah. like we're finding it more stressful than potentially enjoyable it's too stressful i mean when that goal went in the other day the third goal everybody around me was going mad and i'm like in the stands and i'm like I'm not celebrating this what? and they're like what, what's the matter Why? with you i was like he might be offside i think he's offside i was like i'm not celebrating Mm-mm-mm. for var to then break my heart i can't do it i'd rather just not yeah. be in that situation i turned around i was in the pub watching when i tell you how i screamed when the goal went in and then i actually turned around and i had i was wearing a scarf it was very cold in the pub and i turned around and i had it over my head and i said to the guys that i was watching it with i'm i can't like i can't watch can you just tell me can you just tell me and then i kept looking at their faces so it was completely pointless anyway i was just watching their reaction and i was like is it off is it off is it off <laughs> They were like, no, it's on. I was like, ah. I think in a way, there's something also kind of fun afterwards in then being able to almost celebrate twice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I I think a lot of people have gone, VAR's killed the game. Yeah. It's actually added another layer of drama in some ways. Yeah, which again Um, is stressful, but it's... It's stressful when when it's your team and you're involved. I I just, I can't do it. I'm, I'm really suffering with it at the moment. I just, all I can think about is Arsenal. Like, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. Like... But it's good that we've dreamt about being in this position for so long. Like, it's, it's it's such a nice time to be an Arsenal fan. Not even, you know, obviously because we're top of the league right now and, and the title race is on, but just everything about it, like the players, Mikel, like the general atmosphere and vibe right now, it's just a really, really lovely time to be an Arsenal fan. Yeah, so I think is. we need to kind of try embrace and remember it. that as well and embrace it, yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I think we'll leave it there. We've, All right. We've spoken loads of... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how long I've been talking about. We've been about. going for 53 minutes. Oh, God, I'm so sorry to everyone. <laughs> we've spoken loads about Arsenal, but loads about random stuff as well, which is cool. Tangents. That's what it's all about. Yeah, tangents are where it's at. Um, Nicole, thank you so, so much for coming down. Really, really appreciate it. Um, Thanks for having me. It's been fun. I will no longer say things three times anymore. No, 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 no that was... That. I like it. I like it. <laughs> um, no, uh, thank you. As I say, um, tell people where they can follow you, where they can watch your stuff, and how they can basically keep across all the wonderful work that you do. When you said follow you, I was going to make a joke about my address, but actually that would be really yeah, annoying for you to then have to I wouldn't to do that on YouTube if I were you. <laughs> <laughs> you clearly wow, don't do YouTube is. anymore. <laughs> Um, yeah, for, probably for the best for everyone involved. By the way, also those YouTube videos are no longer on oh, the what? web. I was literally going to search for no, them. No, it's, it's best for all that they're not there. Um, <laughs> I, I'm on Instagram. What's my Instagram? Nicole Holiday X. 
because oh, someone had Nicole Holiday. Very annoying when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love the way that you went for the original X, though. I end. didn't know what to do. This was years ago. I panicked. Um, <laughs> Twitter at Nicole Holiday. That's kind of what I what I use. Just ramble on there. We'll leave uh, links in the description below so you'll be able to follow Nicole with the click of a button. What more do you want Ooh. in life? There you go. Uh, we'll be back very, very soon with more. Uh, members will get exclusive access to our player ratings after the game. Uh, live from the Etihad Stadium tomorrow night. And of course, we'll be bringing you the review show some point on Saturday quite early, but I don't know what time I'm going to get back from Manchester. So I don't want to commit to like... <laughs> I've got a good friend, Tom Canton, who has the Guna Talk TV, does a show every day at 8 a.m. Yes, because I, I 8 listen a. to that. Yeah. What are you doing, mate? Like mm -hmm. 8 a.m.? Mm -hmm. I'm not even functioning at 8 a.m. I don't even want to speak to people I'm that asleep time. at 8 a.m. Yeah. I, I'm not asleep, but I'm just not functional enough to do a podcast. Well, if I would say things three times now, I'd be saying them 10 times at 8 a.m. And I'd still love it. <laughs> um, right, we'll leave it there. Thank you all so much. Don't forget to leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And we'll be back soon with more. Until next time, goodbye.